There's a holdup in the Bronx, Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child, cruise ships do and I go wild. Car 54, where are you? Dan Murray? Uh, no. His TV show was over more than an hour ago. Well, the other two judges are here. We'll have to start without him. We can't. Every year we have a show business celebrity as a judge. The contestants will be disappointed. He should be here any minute. Any minute? They're an hour behind schedule. New quartets are arriving every five minutes. They're piled up backstage like sardines. <laughs> By the lot. Save it, Morgan. Save it. Now stop. Save your voice. Remember, it was your voice that carried us through the elimination contest. It's your voice that's going to put us into the final. Captain. Stop. Save that voice, Muldoon. It's you, practically all alone. No offense, boys. You've got nothing behind you, Muldoon. Nothing at all. It's all up to you, Captain. Shh, quiet. Save your voice. Now, look, Muldoon. If it's something important, write it down. Tootie, you're standing on Muldoon's foot. Oh, I'm sorry, Francis. Well, thank heavens you made it. Mr. Murray, this is Mr. Grover. He's in charge of the contest. Well, how do you do, sir? I'll get the first quartet on stage. We're all ready to go. Here, let me take your coat. Why, thank you very much. So sorry I'm late. I was caught in that theater traffic. Oh, it must have been nerve-wracking. Nerve-wracking? Say, you got the wrong boy. Take a look at that. Five years on television without missing a performance. Solid as a rock. Remarkable. Five years on television, an industry where they're dropping like flies. I want you to meet the other judges. Oh, delighted. Folks, this is our celebrity judge. Hmm? Mr. Murray, this is Miss Heffington. Oh, how do you do? I'm delighted to meet you, Mr. Murray. I certainly miss seeing your wife, Catherine, on television. <laughs> oh, Catherine. Oh, oh, that's a different Murray. That's Arthur Murray. I'm Jan Murray. Oh? And this is... Our other judge. How do, do I look like Arthur Murray? Well, oh, please. This is very important to me. Mr. Murray, this is Mr. Kozak. He's with the New York Symphony. How do you do? Our first quartet is ready. Good. Nothing more relaxing than a good barbershop quartet. Did you ever see Arthur Murray? Please. No, I want to settle this right now. Please, sir. I just want to explain the rules. Just so that no quartet will have an advantage. We had them all singing the same song. The same song? Mm -hmm. And how many quartets do you have? After the elimination contest, we have 162. 162? Quartet number one, the East 61st Street Hook and Ladder Gondoliers. Uh, will the next ten quartets please be ready in line? Say, Captain, what number are we? We're 63rd. 63rd? It'll give us more chance to practice. We need it. Now, all together, without Muldoon. And... You're all alone, Muldoon. All alone. Quartet number two. From the Department of Sanitation, the Sophisticates. From the Department of Water and Hydraulics, the Three Drips and the Drop. Number 12, the Bureau of Sewers, the Skylarks. Number one, the Tax Department Troubadours. 
Number 36, the Heart Department Bobolinks. From the Transit Bureau, the Commuters. Our only woman entry. Four policewomen, the girlfriends. Number 49, our quartet from the school board, the four truants. Number 63, the 53rd precinct, Whippoorwills. every minute. Well, it just isn't good enough. Remember, you're backing up the glorious voice of Muldoon. <laughs> Unless you guys are perfect, you're gonna sound like the great Caruso singing along with Mitch. You've got to practice, practice, practice. Close that door, Muldoon's in a draft. Muldoon is in a draft. Muldoon's in a draft. Muldoon's in a draft. Tony Muldoon was in a draft. You should have thrown your body in front of him. I'm sorry, Captain. Tony Muldoon is your partner. He's in your care. He's in that squad car with you all day. You're responsible. I know. Tony, if anything happens to Muldoon's throat, you better cut yours. Captain, I'm taking good care of him. Good. I don't let him drive. I keep all the windows shut tight. The minute we start off, I put a scarf around his neck, I put a shawl over his shoulder, and I keep a blanket over his lap. Good. It's like riding with Whistler's mother. Man, I, I know I've been hounding you, picking on you, but you just gotta come through. I may sound like a sentimental old fool, but I want that championship. We'll do it, Captain. 25 years in the police department, hidden away here in a Bronx precinct, unsung. Boys, the old man's getting gray. I'm coming close to the end of my time here. And I want you to win that barbershop quartet championship. Not for me, your captain. Not for me, your superior officer. But for me, the old man in the twilight of his career. Just a song at twilight. Stop, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, save it, save it. And the rest of you, practice, practice, practice. Yes, sir. Yes. Do you hear that, boys? From now to Friday, it's practice. Where? They threw us out of the shower room, the locker room? But look what happened when we started practicing in a detention cell. The prisoners started screaming about police brutality. <laughs> How about yours? We were there last night. We're still getting calls from the neighbors. How about yours? No, my wife has got guests. Can we race in your house for answers? Don't answer. Just not. <laughs> wait, wait. My 
cousin's got a rehearsal hall. He always got a few empty rooms. He'll let us have one free. I'll call him. We'll start tonight. Come on. Yeah. When you bring up the first contestant... Hey, hi, kids. Hi. Hey. Good to see you. You look great. <laughs> Why shouldn't I look great? Oh, you mean because I missed a couple of shows? Well, we heard you were kind of uh, shook up. What shook up? Hey, you know that wife of mine. You ready? She dragged me to a rest home just because I came home a little nervous one night. We heard you came screaming into the house. What screaming? Hey, remember me, Mr. Iron Nerves? Five years on TV. Never felt better in my entire life. Look at the baby blues. Crystal clear, right? <laughs> Feel that arm, Harold. Are you all right? We all set to go to work? Let's go. Okay, Come on, Jan. There's your script. Why don't you go over it alone? Yeah, good idea, good idea. Come on, kids. We'll line up the routines in the hall. <laughs> That's a funny opening. I come out and I say, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's so nice to be back again. 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 Harold! Get back again! Harold! Harold! Okay. It's my cousin. Some guy next door is complaining. We gotta get out of here. Come on. Well, come on! Hurry up! I'll show you. They're in here. I heard it clear as a bell. There was that awful... Wait. What? Well, what are you looking at? It came right from this room. Now look, Jan. I heard it. I heard it. Boom, boom, boom. Jan, why don't you take another couple of days in the country, well, huh? I'm kidding. I'm perfect. Look, five years on TV. What? Oh, come on. We're wasting time. We got a show to boom, boom, boom. I mean to rehearse. Sure, sure. That's right. We've got a boom. Who are you calling? Your wife. My wife? Don't do that. If she ever finds out, we've got to rehearse the boom, boom, boom. There, there's a show to boom, boom. Uh, hello, boom, boom, boom. Uh, darling. Uh, everything is all right. Don't I sound all right? I just try to tell this boom, boom not to pick up the boom and boom, boom, boom. But he likes the boom, boom. Uh, 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 uh. That's all right. Can I for anybody? It's okay, his car wasn't stolen. He forgot, his wife took it to go shopping. How is he? <laughs> Fine. He ties tonight, yeah. Look, this is our last chance to be together. How about a quick rehearsal? Tori, for heaven's sake. It'll only be a few minutes. Wait here, I got the music in the car. <laughs> Mr. Murray, please lie down. Well... I'll sit down, but that's as far as I'll go. I only came here to make my wife happy. She insisted, I'm here. Uh, she told me a story about your hearing sounds. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to tell you how hysterical some women can get? <laughs> I hear nothing. My stomach may go off every now and then. But up here, I'm like a rock. Don't you hear anything now? Hear what? Boom, boom, boom. What do you think I am? Now, don't you stop believing everything you hear. What are you writing? I told you, I don't hear a thing. I'm as clear as a bell. I told you, I don't hear anything. Not a thing. Now, you pick up that phone, you call my wife, and you tell her I'm perfectly normal. Do you hear me? I know! If you were completely normal, Mr. Murray, you'd be hearing boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 you know, Doc, you're right. Now I hear it. Boom, boom, boom. Coming in clear as a bell. Now you hear boom, boom, boom. Yes. Boom, boom, boom. I hear it all the time. Boom, boom, boom. As a matter of fact, I want you to get this down. I want a case history of this, okay? I'll lie down on this boom, boom, boom. Uh, Doc, would you please call my wife and tell her that I'm on the boom, 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 and I'll be telling you about it. You see, Doc, it all started when I was just a little kid. My family wouldn't let me have a sports car. That was the first time I heard it. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. 54 to dispatch. Repeat. Go to butcher shop. 8201 Market Street. Hold up. K. You get that down, Francis? Don't answer. Just nod. Hey, maybe it's the butcher band in the Bronx who's been knocking off all those butcher shops. Hey, this may be our lucky day. All right, break it up. Come on. I'm going out. Let us do it. Come on. Let us do it. A person can suffocate it. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, come on. Break it up. You all right, Sam? I'm all right. All right, what happened? What happened? The guy came in here with a handkerchief across his face. Ooh, ooh. A red bandana? Yeah, that's right. Are you all right, Sam? 
Dad. Yeah, all right. Hear that, Francis? It's the butcher bandit. Go on. Were you all alone when he came in? With business the way it was? Of course I was alone. Mr. Patterson, this is very important. Can you tell us anything at I'm all? I'm telling you. Are you all right, sir? Yeah, I'm all right. This guy comes in, flashes a gun, marches me into the icebox, closes the icebox door. Mr. Schneider next door heard me pounding. He came in and let me out. Are you all right, Sam? I'm all right. I don't know what got into me, but we got into the icebox. I made a grab for him. You made a grab for him? Yeah, sure. I tore the handkerchief off of his face and bang, he locked me in. Wait, wait. Did you get a description of him? Could you describe him to us? Sure. Ooh, ooh. No one's seen him up till now. Got to call the captain on the phone. Right. I'll go in here and see if I can find the handkerchief. <laughs> this could break the case. Try to remember what he looked like. We want a complete description. Well, he was about this Wait, hot. wait. Captain Block, I got a man here who can describe the butcher bad did. That's right. Yes, sir. Watch it come down the station house right away. Let's go. I have to close up the middle of the day. I'm sorry. Captain said right away. You know, your description can help knock off the guy who's been terrorizing you butchers for six months. Now, what do you look like? Well, he was about this high. Write it down, Francis. Go on with the description. Come on, folks. You gotta make way, folks. Make way. Come on. All right. Now, go on with the description. Yeah, well, yeah. Black hair. Black hair. Write it down, Francis. Yeah. Not there. Dark hair and a kind of pointy nose. Are you all right, Sam? I'm all right. He had a scar on his jaw and a little mustache. Put it down, Francis. Go on. Uh, he had uh, bushy eyebrows and brown eyes. Write it down, Francis. Go on. Uh, he had a birthmark. Oh, oh, let's see. Maybe it wasn't a birthmark. Maybe it was a dimple. Uh, the light was bad. Uh, put them both down, Francis. Go on. This is the man, Captain. Good. You actually saw the butcher bandit. Yeah, I saw. He gave us a description on the way down. Francis took it down. Good work, Muldoon. This is the break we've been waiting for now, Scott, from the beginning. Get this down, Muldoon. Mrs. Kramer had just left with three pounds of chuck. In walks this guy. You all right, yeah, I'm all right. He was about this high. He had a handkerchief across his face. Uh, a bandana. Francis has got it. Great. Let's see it, Muldoon. It's the same bandana that the other butchers described. When Mr. Katz mentioned that he tore it off, Francis went into the icebox to get it, to get the evidence. Pretty where's Muldoon? Muldoon? Francis? Tony, where's Muldoon? He was in the back seat of the car with Mrs. Katz. Who was in the back seat with Mrs. Katz? My partner. You heard me talking to somebody. You were talking to somebody, but the somebody wasn't there. Tony, where's Muldoon? Wait, don't get excited. Let's see. Francis went into the icebox to get the bandana. I called you. You told us to come down. I rushed over and I closed it. Oh, oh, he's in the icebox. Francis is in the icebox. Are you all right, Sam? I'm all right! Francis, are you all right? Sing to me. I mean, speak to me. Get in there, man, and bring him out. Get out of the way, Tony. Careful, men. Don't bend him. He'll break. Careful, watch that step. Easy. Easy now. Easy. Be careful. Get over the step. Up. Get him to the hospital. That's it. Speak to me, Francis. Get him to the hospital. And as for you, Tony. I know. If anything happens to old dude, Captain, I want you to transfer me to pounding a beat in Staten Island. I'll do that, but not right now. I'm going to wait for a blizzard. Easy, man. Easy. Doctor, excuse me, nurse. Bring a pan for under the bed. He's starting to defrost. Doctor, is he going to see him? He's going to be all right. 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 There's a very sick man in the next room. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes, Mr. Murphy. Why is the room so noisy? There were some men in uniform out in the hall. They came to get me. Now, heard what the doctor said. You're perfectly all right. Yes, that's right. I'm perfectly all right. I need quiet. 
buy it. Very good. How are you, boy? Fine, Captain. Do you think you can sing, Francis? Shame on you, Tootie. A man's in critical condition and you want him to. Do you think you can, Muldoon? I, I don't know. Well, we can find out. Come on. Boom, 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 boom. He says he's perfectly all right. Absolutely not. He can't be moved for 24 hours. But, Doctor, I'm perfectly all right. There's this contest tonight. Forget it. You're not moving from here for at least 24 hours. But, Doctor, my voice is in perfect shape. Listen. By the... <laughs> what are we going to do without Muldoon? What are we going to do? I'll tell you what we're gonna do without Muldoon. I just figured it out. It's so simple, even you could have figured it out. The answer's been staring us right in the face. Without Muldoon, we're gonna lose. Do you hear me? Lose! <laughs> Hello. Muldoon. Hello, Captain. I'm perfectly all right. My voice is in perfect shape. I just tested it. Captain, I have a plan where you can get me out in time for the contest. Muldoon, I'm your superior officer. I won't listen to any such nonsense. Here's Tootie. Tell it to him. Gunther, listen closely. On the first floor, there's an intern's dressing room. Mm-hmm. I got it. And you want us to be there at 7 o'clock? 7 o'clock. That'll give us just time to get to the auditorium in time for the contest. Right. What's going on? What are you doing in your clothes? Oh, Doctor, this contest means everything to my captain. I won't take a chance. Doctor, there's no chance. I never felt better in my life. Are you sure? I'm absolutely sure. All right, you can go. Oh, gee, thanks, Doc. We need the room anyway. There's a nervous wreck next door, and he insists on changing his room. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks, Doc. Doctor, he's asleep. Emergency. There he is. Cover him up good so nobody will see him. <laughs> Who is it? We came to get you. You knew we'd come to get you. Now take it easy. Boom, 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 boom. Save it for the contest. <laughs> Schnauzer, get his head. Nelson, get his feet. <laughs> Nurse, was the patient transferred to this room? Yes, he's about to be operated on. Operated on? He was just here for a rest. Excuse me, this is an emergency operation. Emergency operation? Boom, 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 boom. What's that? Oh, that's what's coming out. Wait, what's going on here? Boom, 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 boom. Mr. Murray! Mr. Murray? Yeah, this is Jan Murray. Mr. Murray, where are they taking you? Where are they taking me? You know where they're taking me. Where everybody goes, boom, 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 <laughs> Wait, boom, wait. Boom. What happened to Officer Muldoon? Muldoon, he went to some contest boom, or something. Boom, 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 we can make it. Boom, Come on. Boom, boom, boom. Stop! Stop! Oh, Mr. Murray. Uh, oh, they went without me. <laughs> Come back. Come back. I want to go to Boom Boom Land. Look how good I can do it. Boom, boom. Honeymoon, keep a shining in June. Your silvery beams will bring love's dreams. We'll be cuddling soon by the silvery moon. Thank you. Thank you. My boys, you did it for the old man. This is the happiest day of my life.
There's a holdup in the Bronx, Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout who showed a child, cruise ships to an idle wild. Car 54, where are?